What's going on, fancy football fans? I'm your host, Hussein the Brain, and you're watching The Couch. Welcome to my week four waiver wire pickups video. Names that come to mind when we think of fantasy woes for the past week for week three are Carson Palmer, definitely Ryan Matthews, of course, Kelvin Benjamin. But you wanna know who the real fantasy woe is? It's you. It's me. It's just about everyone in the Fantasy Couch League, except for Team 9. Watch this video if you haven't already of our 2016 draft so you know what I'm talking about. We made fun of Mitchell, we made fun of Team Yay Area, Team Number 9, uh, during the draft. You guys on YouTube comments were making fun of him, saying he's, he's doomed, he's not gonna win. This guy is at the top of the rankings, he's number one, and he's 3-0, and so shame on all of us. We're the fantasy woes for week three. I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, a little woozy. Hopefully I don't pass out during the video. Got a lot of great waivers for you guys. Hopefully I get through them all. Let's go. For quarterbacks, I like Alex Smith. I talked about him a lot. Should be a decent spot start if you own a guy like Aaron Rodgers. By the way, first bye week of the season, Aaron Rodgers, um, Green Bay Packers are on bye. Also, Philadelphia Eagles are on by for week four. So I like Alex Smith. I think he's going to have to throw the ball a little bit um, in this game against the Steelers at Pittsburgh. I like Ryan Tannehill as a long-term QB2 pickup. Kirk Cousins should be uh, pretty average, maybe probably above average. Um, decent pickup if people dropped him. A good start this week against the Browns as well. That Washington team does not have a great rushing attack. They're going to need to throw the ball all season, and that's really why I like Kirk Cousins. In deeper leagues and dual QB quarterback leagues, I am probably going to drop Jared Goff. Yeah, I got some QB issues going on in the Instagram experts deep dual QB league. And pick up Colin Kaepernick. Uh, Chip Kelly kind of hinted that Colin Kaepernick might start in kind of soon. So he's definitely worth a, a pickup in those deep and dual quarterback leagues. Now, Blaine Gabbers averaged 5.7 rush attempts per game, averaging 25 rush yards per game. If Kaepernick was, you know, doing these rush, uh, rush stats, if he was in there rushing with the football, these numbers could be about like 40 or maybe even 50. 50 rush yards per game and that's gonna go to go to be 800 rush yards in a 16 game season if you expand it out to a 16 game season so I do like the potential with that and like I said before I'm probably going to be picking up Kaepernick in that league where I'm desperate for a QB3 in deep dual QB leagues also look at Brian Horry got a good matchup against the Lions Lions know how to score a lot of Score a lot of points, but their defense is not that good. For running backs, number one waiver wire pickup this week, and definitely the number one running back to pick up this week is Jordan Howard. Lanford's going to miss about half the season. He's slated to miss about four to six weeks. I also like Darren Sproles, but keep in mind, he's on by Orleans Dark. Orleans Darkwa is pretty good. Richard Jennings may come back this week or next week. Um, but Shane Vereen is out for basically the whole season or at least like eight weeks. So he's basically going to miss the whole season. That's why Orleans Dark was a good running back pickup. Not a great one, but a good one. Dwayne Washington of the Lions, no secret here, mentioned him last week, but still not even owned in a third of league. So that's a little surprising. I like Deion Lewis as a stash, especially in PPR leagues. Hey, this guy may not play this season. Hey, this guy may play in a few weeks, then get hurt again. But the upside is definitely worth it. PPR league with Brady, he's got top 10 RB upside. And with that upside, he's definitely worth a stash if you have the bench room, especially if you have an IR spot. I mean, he shouldn't be owned if there's an IR spot uh, in your league. DeAndre Washington, Jack Del Rio may put this guy in as a starter later on. Not likely, not probable, but possible. And that's why he's worth a stash. Also, Kenneth Dixon, probably the best stash right now. I wasn't too high on this guy um, in, in early in the preseason, but after the Ravens cut and re-signed four set and the rushing game has not been working well, defense is playing okay, Kenneth Dixon is going to get a shot right here, folks, to be the number one running back, and he's definitely worth a stash in your league. I'm fortunate enough that in one of my leagues, the Fancy Couch League, there's IR spots, so I have him stash in one of those IR spots on my bench. 
In deeper leagues, I like Dexter McCluster in PPR leagues. Same thing with Travis Cadet, PPR only. If I had to pick up a Dolphins running back other than Arian Foster, I'd have to go with Kenyon Drake. And some sneaky guys that, that I have on this list are Robert Turbin and Josh Ferguson with Frank Gore getting up there in age. Cameron Artis Payne is good as long as Jonathan Stewart is out. Fozzie Whitaker on the same team. The Panthers gets a slight boost in PPR leagues. Paul Perkins is a stash only in deep leagues. Same thing with Wendell Smallwood, and he's on by this week. And Kadeem Carey of the Chicago Bears because, as I mentioned earlier, Langford is out. Maybe the number two best pickup overall for waivers and the number one wide receiver to pick up is Terrell Pryor. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to be good when Corey Coleman returns, when Josh Gordon comes back in a week. Not at all. The upside is there. There's the, the floor is not good, but the ceiling is up there. And with that, he's definitely worth a pickup in your league. Uh, just hands down. He's worth it. He has the upside. Philip Dorsett, don't get uh, too down on him, guys, from his last week's performance. With Moncrief out, this guy is a pickup in just about every league. I absolutely like Devontae Adams. I don't know if you can add him or have him on your team because he does have a buy, so I don't know if you can afford having him on your squad. But, but if you can, definitely don't sleeve on him. He's definitely a good pickup, especially with Randall Cobb being a bust so far the first three weeks. Um, if I didn't mention it already uh, three times yet, Devontae Adams, he's a Packer. He's on by as well. Keep that in mind. Chris Hogan, don't sleep on this guy with Brady coming back week five. Great stash. You should be able to even start him as a wide receiver four, you know, as a, as a guy, as a spot start when Brady does return. I really like him. Anquan Bolden has been outperforming um, Golden Tate, guys, so don't sleep on that guy. I really like him. Um, you know, not worth a pickup in 10-man leagues or anything, but don't sleep on Anquan Bolden. I also like uh, Cole Beasley in PPR leagues. He shouldn't be out there, guys. He's really good. And in much deeper leagues, I like Ted Ginn Jr., Jamison Crowder, Chris Conley, and Adam Humphreys. For tight ends, look for uh, Tyler Eifert on my number one tight end to pick up. I also really like Zach Miller, Cameron Bray. Uh, Gary Barnage, Kyle Rudolph's the real deal, guys. And Jack Doyle, he may not be the real deal. I don't know. But I, if I had Wolves at tight end, I'm definitely starting Jack Doyle. I don't even care, man. This guy's been getting a ton of red zone targets. He's been looking really good. He looks like the real deal. Not 100% confident in him, but I don't care. I'd still start him if I really needed a tight end. Now, Kobe Fleener, well, the main reason he did good was because one of their main receiving targets on the Saints, Willie Sneed, was out. But regardless, he's improved every week. Seems like he's getting a better hang of that playbook that he didn't get a good hang of in the beginning of the season. And I really like him. He's made a, he made a really good catch towards the end of that game. And he should be really good. Hey, man, he's on the Saints. And Drew Brees, he knows how to use that tight end. Zach Ertz, he's on by, but he may come back week five. I actually do see him coming back week five. Great stash right there, guys. He, he can probably start him week five when he does come back. They're on... Uh, Eagles are on by this week for week four. And I like the upside with Clive Walford. Not a great matchup this week going against the Ravens, though, guys. Uh, Hunter Henry, as long as Antonio Gates is out, that's pretty good. He's the backup tight end over there in San Diego. Jesse James, don't like him too much. That's why he's at the end of this list. But definitely worth a pickup if you're super desperate and in a deep league. And keep tabs on Austin Safarian Jenkins, okay? That's why I got Cameron Braid on this list. The Bucks cut ASJ, but the Jets, I believe, picked him up. And he's not worth a roster spot just yet, but make sure you keep tabs on him. Uh, I know the Jets could use a tight end. They haven't had one in a long time since, um, what's that guy's name? Dustin Keller. Yeah, that's been, that's been quite a while. I really like the Bills defense depending on, depending on what quarterback the Patriots are going to start. So keep tabs on the Patriots. Um, quarterback situation. All three quarterbacks are hurt. Let's see who they're going to start. I like Washington going against the Browns. No brainer there. Ravens are the real deal, but we still got to see, you know, how they're going to do. Not a great matchup this week against the uh, uh, Raiders, but I do like the Ravens as a long-term pickup. Look at the Lions defense. They suck. They're playing against the Bears. Terrible defense. Great matchup. Look at the Jets D though. Russell Wilson, if he does play, is going to be far from 100%. So I really like that defense. And the Bengals, I've been high on them before the season. I think they're going to be pissed off. They're going to be angry. They're going to do well against the Dolphins. I like them this week and for long term. 
For kickers, Dustin Hopkins, Nick Novat, and Chandler Cananzaro are my three favorite kickers for short term and long term. I also have some more guys here um, that you can pick up. I like, for example, Dan Carpenter is a really good sneaky start for just this week, short term. So I put next to them if they're good for short term or both short, or both short term and long term guys. If you guys need a kicker, right here are my top 10. And those are all my waiver wire pickups for week four. Make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. We're trying to get to 10,000 subs. I really appreciate you guys subscribing. Let's get to 10K real soon. Make sure you guys like and comment on the video. Um, if you're a real fantasy couch fan and you want to let me know when you ask your fantasy uh, questions, whether on YouTube, Twitter, or Facebook, any social media, Instagram, make sure you use hashtag AskTheBrain. All right, guys, I'll see you on the next video.